Hello and welcome to Cobblecraft, K-A-0-K-A-O. I'm Kelly and today we're going to talk about GMRS radio. We're going to be talking just the basics, like we're going to try and keep it at the level where I needed it a year ago. And hopefully that's a good place for you if you're starting out. Uh, we're only going to be talking about the system itself and basically how it works. And in the next video we'll talk about how to get those radios to do what you want. This time we're just going to try and give you what you need to know to decide if you want to get into GMRS radio. So first of all, I'm going to check my notes because you can't keep things simple if you don't have a plan. I want to tell you I'm going to undersell GMRS radio because if you think you're going to talk around the planet or around the state, it's not going to happen. That's just the nature of the beast. And I'll explain more of that as we go. Uh, KA0KAO is my ham call sign, in case you've been watching my other videos and you're wondering what the heck is that. So you may be seeing it backwards, that's tough luck on you, because I'm not a video editor and I have no intentions of trying to be. So, ham radio is way different than GMRS radio. You can get away with a lot of other things. Let's talk about some of that, but let's first talk about why I got into GMRS radio. So I had one of these radios that you're seeing the video through. It's my camera, just a cheap camera. And I felt I could communicate everything I wanted to through that. I didn't think of it as a radio. I thought of it as just a phone. But guess what? When the derecho came through Iowa a year and a half ago, we were freaked out. We had family in Cedar Rapids right in the brunt of this and we couldn't get a hold of them. We talked to them briefly and then all of a sudden everything went out and we're hearing all these news stories about the damage and we didn't know what to think. So once we found out they were okay a few days later, um, we decided we need a better way to communicate. So, you know, I had some of these little radios in my um, hiking packs and stuff and that's GMRS. I thought, well, heck, then I can just get into that. Uh, what you'll find out is that there are limits to what radio can do. And you need to be able to know those limits and choose the right system for you. So when it comes to GMRS, let's uh, talk about some things that you need to do. So, uh, number one, get in a local ham club. I don't care if you plan to... Uh, become a, a ham, you know, a ham radio operator, amateur at some point, but either way, you'll meet some great people with some real help on radios. So if you think radios is the direction you're going by the time this uh, video is over, then that would be the first thing I'd recommend. Find a local ham club and get to know the people. They'll be glad to help you understand radios and get your stuff up and running. Maybe the second video that I show you will give you some of those things you'll need to do and you may want some help from them. So either way, you're not out anything because the ham people I have met are all golden. Great people. Uh, let's see, what's next on here? Get a handheld radio. Sounds simple enough, right? We all probably have one of these in our junk drawer. Here's one my grandson uses. Uh, GMRS radio is, is General Mobile Radio Service. Very simple. That's what it's for. It's uh, something that you don't have to have a test for. Anybody can pick one up and use it. Um, on the FRS side of it, there are 22 channels set aside for this type of a purpose. I think it's like seven of those are FRS, Family Radio Service, which uses very low power um, it, you might be able to talk to each other, whoops, around the backyard and around the neighborhood and stuff. But as I explain to you more how these radios work, you'll see that that's really not the direction we need to go. We need to go with GMRS. And GMRS does um, require that you get a GMRS license from the FCC. And let me tell you, that could be a video in itself, just trying to sort through their website. But don't wait for me for that. Go out and Google that or find, find out how it's done. It's fairly simple, but it's tough to reach um, just because of the nature of government. 
So you'll need a license. Let's talk. Let's keep that in mind. And uh, beyond these little radios, these are. This is probably five watts at the most, which isn't a lot of power. There are other options when getting a handheld. This is a Baofeng. Uh, Baofengs have been very popular. There's a lot of talk about legalities and stuff there that the FCC gets involved in. Um, but I'm not breaking any rules to open this up and listen to anything. It's, it's only when you start transmitting on certain channels that it becomes questionable. And I'm not going to bore you with all that stuff. You're in an emergency. You're talking back and forth. I have never heard of the FCC coming down anybody's throat for getting on a little radio. This particular one is a Baofeng UV82, uh, real quality radio. You can program it to use GMRS. You can program it to use um, ham UHF frequencies, which is just below the GMRS. Or you can program it to use VHF frequencies, which are some of the more common ham frequencies, has a, a lot better um, range and stuff than this. But uh, that's probably about an $80 radio. You want to get in the market for about half that. This is a UV5R. Um, this is going to have oh, upwards of 8 watts, as does the UV82. Wattage is an important thing. We'll talk more about that. Uh, the UV5R has been super popular just because of its price. And if you're just looking to get into this, That'd be a good place to start, but go with the 8 watt instead of the 5 watt if you can find it. And the FCC has been bothering them about uh, making them compliant to these certain rules. So not every Baofeng out there can be programmed for GMRS. You're going to want to make sure that it can go up to 470 megahertz. That's about as technical as I'm going to get here today, but you'll need 470 megahertz because GMRS um, transmits on 462 and 467 megahertz. Wow, that boring math stuff. Okay, so where are we next here? Buy a handheld. Um, this isn't your best option. Again, I don't want to oversell GMRS. It's not your best option, but if you're looking for a tool that can help you out, this can do it. Um, but again, if you have friends in the ham club and you need to reach outside the range of your GMRS radios, if you can get a hold of them with your GMRS, and there's a lot of hams around, usually within a few blocks of you, then you can always relay messages, especially if it's important stuff. They're glad to help out. Let's talk about that range stuff, though. So when I'm walking around the yard with this or around the woods with this, that's great. If I'm maybe within a mile of somebody with my little three to five watt radio, I can probably get a pretty decent signal on them and probably transmit back to them. As soon as I start going over hills and through valleys, things get tougher because radio signals, if you can imagine like you've seen it on the cartoons, the antenna is sending off little electromagnetic waves for lack of a, a better explanation. I don't want to get scientific. So uh, those waves are going out line of sight. They're not rolling down the hills and up the valleys or vice versa. Um, they're just going out where they can go. And they're blocked most times by hills, by valleys, sometimes by trees. Because trees, especially when they're full of leaves, have a lot of water. Water likes to block stuff like that. Um, sometimes weather will block them. Uh, just things to keep in mind that these GMRS radios are mostly line of sight communication. So if I'm standing here and I'm trying to talk over, let's say, six miles away and it's perfectly flat, I can probably reach that person, but it's going to be pushing it because the earth has a curvature. Sorry, flat earthers, but that's what we've discovered. There is a curvature to the Earth, and as you fall over that curve, those radio waves are not bouncing around. That's where you get into the ham, where they can send the radio waves up to the atmosphere and back down, and somebody else around the world can pick it up. That's another story. We'll get there. 
So the range, line of sight, keep that in mind. Five to eight watts, you know, that's, eh, that's pretty tame. What you want to consider is to get a base station, especially if you've got a family or friends. I've got a little base station here. This is about a $125 radio, maybe. Um, you can buy a lot better. I think now, last I checked, about two and a quarter is going to get you a really nice GMRS radio similar to this. And uh, that has about 25 watts. If you're going to spend the extra money to get you probably spend another 25 30 bucks you can get up to 50 watts with gmrs now you can spend the same money and get a radio that can be programmed for gmrs but also used on the ham stations on uhf bands and on vhf bands highly recommend that over just gmrs because you may decide to become a ham at some point and which again i highly recommend uh, what am I forgetting here? When you get into the base station, there, there's other things to get involved with. Uh, you're going to need not just the radio, you're going to need an antenna. These little guys have an antenna hooked right on them. But the base station is going to need some coax out to an antenna somewhere on your roof, on a tower. We'll get into that more in the second video, probably. You're going to also need a power supply. So a power supply can be uh, probably a hundred bucks. You can get them for 60, but you're gonna need something that can give you a consistent, electrically quiet 13.8 um, volts minimum. And you're probably gonna want something that'll kick out about 30 amps. There I go again with the math, sorry about that. Uh, but that power supply is an important part. The antenna, you can't go wrong with the antenna. You want something that, yeah, I can spend 15 bucks on an antenna and it's going to spit out radio frequency, but I'd be better off spending $70 and get some with gain. Gain is something that uh, you're spitting out your energy here and the gain will help you spit it more efficiently, for lack of a better term. And these antennas are usually described in dBs, decibels, of gain. So uh, a good mobile antenna. This is a mobile radio, by the way. I use it for a base. Good mobile antenna might have 5 dB of gain. Um, the one on my roof here has, I think, 10 dB of gain. That's a pretty decent antenna. Um, that's important stuff as you get down the road. So when you're making your investments, think about these things. And feel free to comment in the section uh, below. And ask your questions and we'll all find an answer for you. Highly recommend, though, that you spend the extra money to get set up initially. Figure out what you want, what direction you're going, and then spend accordingly. You generally get what you pay for. I'm showing you a little cheap Baofeng radios because, hey, this is Cobblecraft, right? So... Everything I do is pretty much cobbled, but it gets the job done. Let's see. And then I would recommend that you get a ham license. If I can get a ham license, probably you can too. I mean, you're my favorite viewer after all. We'll do everything we can do to, to help you do that. But uh, getting a ham license at the technician level is not that difficult. Uh, there's plenty of resources out there to teach you the information you need and and if I can pass that test, I'm pretty sure you could too. And it may be worth getting the general license later on so that you can use the high frequencies where you can bounce off the atmosphere and back down around. But another thing I'd like to recommend is that you get a shortwave radio. So you don't have to be a ham to have a shortwave radio, but you can pretty much listen to everything they're doing. Um, there's a lot of shortwave programs out there that will keep you up to date on news, religious content, music, anything. And it's coming from around the world. So it's not just the local propaganda. This is everybody's propaganda and some of the wacko stuff out there, too. You have to listen in and find out what's accurate and what's not. You can't transmit on a shortwave radio like this, but you can get into it for anywhere from 60 to... 
200 bucks depending on what you want to spend and how much quality you want. So it looks like we just passed the 15 minute mark and I don't like to go longer than that. I think I've covered everything we need to. I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like, uh, share the video with your friends if they're interested in perhaps looking into GMRS, and certainly subscribe. Put your comments below. We'd love to hear from you. KA0KAO, signing out.